three things came out of that though. One was um, I, I got an immediate seat at the table uh, in the startup community. Um, it was good for business. And then three is, you know, I, I fell in love with it. <laughs> I was just like, this is everything. I, I don't know why, but my goodness, this lights me up. This is where I get my energy. Welcome to the Ad Valued Entrepreneurs Podcast, the place where we help entrepreneurs to not hate their boss. Our mission is to end entrepreneurial unhappiness. If you dream of changing the world, but you're not sure where to start, the Ad Valued Entrepreneurs Podcast will help you transform your life and business. This podcast is for entrepreneurs who want more freedom and fulfillment from their work so they can live the life that they desire. You deserve it, and it is possible. My name is Robert Peterson, former passer, turned CEO, and the smiling coach. I believe that success without happiness is failing, but there is hope. Join us each week as we bring you an inspiring leader or message to help you. Thanks for investing time with us today. Our guest today is in the business of connection, connecting people, connecting those people with each other, and connecting businesses to their ideal clients. Jason Croft has 30 years experience in media, movies, video, corporate events, podcasts, both behind the camera and now in front. Jason is leveraging those skills to further his mission of connecting and helping others to do the same. Jason is the founder of Media Leads, an agency dedicated to a new form of business development, media lead generation, turning his love of precision interviewing and shining a spotlight on others like he's done with Startup Dallas and the Jason Croft Show, Strategy in Action and Concentric into a scalable system that allows his clients to shorten their sales cycle and rapidly build their dominance in any industry. Jason Croft and Robert discuss his journey as an entrepreneur, podcaster, and media expert. He has leveraged his experience and relationships to create a business helping entrepreneurs with their lead generation. His mission is to put a spotlight on his clients for the world to see. If you're an entrepreneur who started their business with a purpose and a passion that has been lost in the busyness of the daily grind, we get it. That is why we've opened up our free strategy calls. A lot of entrepreneurs, probably including you, just want a sense of clarity on the barriers holding them back that you need to overcome in order to accelerate your growth and achieve your dreams. These short 30-minute calls give you a chance to work with one of our coaches without any commitment or pressure. Scheduling is easy. Just go to smilingcall.com. Let's jump on a call and get you the help and clarity you need. Select a time and let's build your business. It's time for you to add value. Well, Jason, thanks so much for jumping on the show today, man. I appreciate it. Looking forward to an awesome conversation. Heck yeah. Me too. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So just tell us a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey and, and what's led you to what you're doing today. Oh my goodness. Well, I've, I've, I think I've always, and when I mean always, I think always <laughs> that entrepreneurial bug. I think we, I think our, we true entrepreneurs like have those stories of, of kid being kids selling stuff and, you know, whether it's selling candy at school that we took out of the, <laughs> out of the cabinets or I, my, my, uh, my mom has stories of me, you know, being seven or eight years old, selling, selling rocks at the side of the road and me going door to door, you know? So I, I think there's, there's always been that aspect and whether it's, you know, being freelance or actually starting a business around what I do, it's kind of been the majority of my life has been in that world. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm definitely not meant for the, the full-time employment kind of life. <laughs> <laughs> for sure but yeah video film movies all that stuff has been my world for 30 years um started in actually my senior year of high school started working for a video production company back in uh fort worth texas where i lived at the time and um that gave me you know a ton of just real world experience right there and went into college for the movies side of things where i got that experience and then Kind of had those parallel tracks going for for quite a few years of you know paying the bills a lot of times with the the corporate work uh, while you know working on independent film and you know pays a little bit and then this pays a lot and then you know but the up and down and so had both those things going you know at the same time and it was kind of a weird wild thing when that passion for the you know the movie side of things that had driven me for so long just 
switched off one day. Um, it was almost overnight. It was very strange, but what went in its place was this love and passion of business, marketing, all that fun stuff. So since then I've kind of been on, on that journey, helping people with, with that kind of, that kind of stuff. So, so let's talk about obviously business marketing and this great American internet landscape. <laughs> How, what do you uh, want to talk about? That's yeah, a big well, topic. It, it, it is. <laughs> like, <laughs> so obviously film production was, was a big passion. So obviously video is, is a, is a piece of, of what you do. And obviously a big part of both film production and video for marketing is, is storytelling. So maybe let's start there and talk about that transition from video production, storytelling to business storytelling yeah there, there are definitely some similarities there um i think you know where i kind of bridged that you know for folks is, is really pulling that story out out of them it, meaning that you know these last even even the several years of straight video production that i was still doing it really centered around the interview even before even when it wasn't, you know, me on a show interviewing somebody, um, even when it was me off camera, you know, creating content for, for them, still pulling that out, right? Um, that was always the, the the fun stuff for me. You know, I want to make this look good and want to make it, you know, beautiful and all of that and professional and put you in a great light. But I also I want that humanness to come out and to get that, you know, across and, you know, in t about 2015, working for a production company, one of my short stints of working full time somewhere, uh, <laughs> they, you know, I started this initiative, this marketing initiative by, you know, video podcast there, a video show that we shot in our studios uh, called Startup Dallas. And by default, you know, just jumped in the in the host chair because nobody else is going to do it. And that became sort of the ultimate version of what we're talking about here and pulling those stories out of people. And, and that, I think that's when I, I really started to get purposeful with that because I, I would do that even just in video production, being off camera and kind of getting that. Um, but it really helped me hone that ability, right. When you're doing you know, 80 something episodes of this show and 60 of this, like you're just doing the reps, right? You're getting that out. And if you have any, you know, want to get better, you know, you, you study the stuff, you watch the stuff back, you listen back and, and yell at yourself, you know, and <laughs> you're like, why'd you say it that way? <laughs> but, um, even it, better, really you, listen, you listen with your spouse and then she starts telling you which words you're repeating all the time and yeah. the words you say. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, you say that word all the time, like, really? And you don't realize. And then the next time you go to say it, you're like, oh, <laughs> exactly. And, and I tell people like when I'm when I'm coaching somebody through it, just helping them if they're going to start or they're a client, either one. I, I'm like a big part of this process is listening to your show back, watching your show back. And it's the last thing you want to do. Nobody wants to do it ever. But it's the most it's, it's just the greatest communication <laughs> school you're ever going to go to because you listen to that back. And it's not just about being on camera. It's that it translates to real life, right? Every interaction that you have, you stop yourself from saying that thing over and over again <laughs> that you didn't realize you did. And it's, it's so powerful. Uh, you know, I highly, I highly recommend it just for that. You know, it's such an important tool because you know, I mean, this isn't a normal thing for any anybody who's trying to build their business and create content to go put themselves on camera, stare into a lens, and you know, it's not normal. You know, so you know, even though we look at other people like, man, they're just born for this. Like, no, like it's it's doing the reps and doing the reps and doing the reps and letting go of, you know caring about what people think <laughs> well, <laughs> no, to a think, great extent you know the, like the good news about starting a youtube channel or starting to go live on facebook is is in the beginning nobody knows that you're doing it and so 
nobody really watches it. So <laughs> nobody sees those early yeah. ones in the beginning. It just, em- it's yeah, a embrace that better before you build up an audience. <laughs> exactly. And then, and then the, the other side of that too, is that if you, if you go back, most folks who have done that and built this great empire of content and been su- super successful, they didn't go back and erase those. They're just as proud of those. And they're, you know, and, and embarrassed and all that's like, Oh yeah, that was bad. But they, but you'll notice they leave them there because there's still value there. And there's value in showing people this is, this is a starting place. You know, I know you see me now, but this is a starting place. Yeah. You know, we all start with these rough edges. Yeah. You know? Well, and it's really a testimony to, to the need to take action. You can't make it perfect because you don't know how to make it perfect. You have to just start and then figure out how to make it perfect, which is why you, you talk about listening to your own show and, and being able to, to, to recognize, you know, where you're repeating, where you what questions you're asking that work really well, what questions you're asking that kind of fall on your face. And, and so, yeah, there's, there's a lot of power in, you know, fine tuning and figuring out all of those, all of those pieces. Yeah. Big time. And it is, well, it's, yeah, it's great to model, right? Like it's great to have that. It helps me to have a vision like, Oh, I want, I want that, you know, but you, you gotta, you know, you like, I'll get there, you know, but, but to have that place to go it, it is great, but you're absolutely right. Just jumping in and, and going is so important. So let's talk about startup Dallas and, and obviously refining your interviewing chops but let's talk about some of the lessons that you learned in interviewing these startup businesses oh yeah the the three biggest things that came out of that whole process of doing exactly what you described right just jumping in doing it like i listened to podcasts that was like the extent of you know why i should be on camera hosting something right (laughs) You know, and it's just like, well, it's just, a holiday in express. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's exactly the model. Just like, I am not qualified at all, but I'm doing it anyway. And three things came out of that, though. One was um, I, I got an immediate seat at the table uh, in the startup community. Um, I mean, I was asked to host events and be at this place and, go, you know, go here and all of those things because I very publicly, you know, put the startup community in the spotlight in these individual members of it, you know, and it became a thing really fast and not because, Oh, suddenly I've got a million views on anything quite the opposite, right? Like if you looked at the YouTube channel, you'd be like, nobody's watching. It doesn't matter. And yet because it was such a niche focused endeavor, the people it mattered to, they knew and they were paying attention and it, it, it meant something. So that happened. Um, it was good for business, right? You know, I mean, we had these, these prospective clients, you know, walking through the doors of the production company, you know, to be on this show. So that they're in the doors, they're starting that relationship and, and, and going from there. And then three is, you know, I, I fell in love with it. <laughs> I was just like, this is everything. I, I don't know why, but my goodness, this lights me up. This is where I get my energy. And, and I, I mean, I developed the most amazing network of people who are, you know, still dear friends to this day um, that it's almost, it's almost scary to think if I hadn't done that show, the, the people I wouldn't know now, you know, like going back, like, man, that person probably wouldn't even be in my life. And, and they're so dear to me, you know, and have been over the years. Uh, it's, it's strong. It's, it's, it's so powerful. So many, so many lessons there. And it, is, it really was too, just that repetition. Right. And I did listen to every show back, watch every show back, you know, and we well, got to have at least one for... listener then. Right. I mean, that's you yeah, exactly. your numbers up. That's right. I listen multiple times just to make from different devices, just so I can tell. <laughs> you have to, right? I mean, I got to make sure that the 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 counting thing, the download thing, is working because if it do, if You're I right. don't move it, it's not moving by itself. <laughs> and that's and that and honestly, that's like that was one of the biggest insight that show. The next one, the next, like it was that insight that it 
didn't matter. It didn't matter from a business perspective, still having a positive impact. It didn't matter from people agreeing to be on the show. Like, and I've been telling people this, like, I think we did, we did 80 something episodes of that for the Jason Croft show, the driving around show that I did after that 60 something of that. I've done 60 of, of my latest show. Nobody asks about downloads. What are your numbers? What are your views? Like well, there, I have one few. person. Yeah. There are a few Do that, like that, that ask like the big people, right? Like, you know, but um, exactly. <laughs> I've had, I've had one or two that I've, I've asked to come on the show and Gino Wickman needs 10,000 downloads per episode to come on a show. And so, you know, yeah, well, we, that, we'll just move you later down the list <laughs> next year. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> right. But we'll talk to you right, then. The majority, the majority don't. And, and, and they don't care. They want to be on a show. They, they, they get a chance to be in front of a new audience. And, and so I tell people all the time, like, just start, like put yourself out there. And I was interviewing, you know, some pretty heavy hitters within the first 20 episodes. And I saw that like so and once, impressive. Yeah, oh, and once, yeah. you, once you start, you just put it out there. You say, Hey, I've got this podcast and they introduce you to somebody and they introduce you to somebody. And like you said, we've got friends in our lives that, my wife's saving up bail money because one of our podcast guests is coming into town in February and they plan to go out and I don't know what they're going to do, but she said to save up bail money. So <laughs> you, you just never know what, what kind of relationship. So, so let's talk about that network. Let's talk about connection and, and how valuable that is for obviously growing a podcast, but for you as a, as a businessman. Yeah, it's, so it's, it's, it's two things. It's, it's, me as you know, business owner, like you say, but it's also me as just a human being, like for whatever reason, like it, it feeds my soul, right? Like that's the, the incredible thing. You and I shared that the other day, you know, talking through that of, I remember, you know, reading uh, Malcolm Gladwell's The Tipping Point. I remember reading about the Maven salesperson connector and, and going, you know, hitting that, that connector description and going, Oh, I want to be that. I don't know why I want to be that. That's, and I was the furthest thing in the world from it. Right. And I went on this purposeful journey to go be that, be that connector, be that networker and, and, and all of that. And that's been a, been a blast. So it, I, I do separate the two because I acknowledge the fact that I love it. It's phenomenal and fun and enjoyable. And if I just do this all day, every day, Fantastic. Connecting people, connecting, you know, all that stuff. It's great. But I acknowledge that, you know, some people do not <laughs> enjoy that. But here's still the lessons. Here's why too bad, suck it up, do it anyway. <laughs> it needs to happen because it's it's everything. And then especially when you go into it, just like any other business building endeavor, sales endeavor, marketing, endeavor, anything else, it's the, your intention when you go into it, right? If it's get, 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 well, people are going to feel that, you know, at whatever level, conscious, subconscious, whatever, they're going to feel it, you know, and it's not good, <laughs> you know? So when you can truly be in that mindset and that space and it requires patience and it requires long-term thinking um, and it requires that intention of like, I no idea why we're on a call today, but I'm, just something tells me we need to talk and connect right and just be open to that and and jump into it everything comes out of that um because it's so quickly that is how you know business gets done and built that's who we want to to, to have and then we have those things in place right and do that in a smart way so there's the human side like yeah i just want to know you but you can also be purposeful and smart and make sure that you have your very succinct message that people can consume, grab onto and know when they need to introduce you, right. To be succinct with that and, and very purposeful is important. Otherwise, you know, you're meeting some folks, but if they don't have that thing and that's, it's for their benefit as much as yours, cause they, they want, I mean, I'm sure we've all experienced that. If we've gone through those networking things, we want to, yeah, I, man, I just love this person. I don't know what it is. I just love, I hope I can send them some business, right? Like they, you want to do that. So help us out. 
when you you know when you have that like tell me exactly who you want you know to find and how you're gonna help them and and that's that's so that's so strong so it's well, been everything for me so i think that's a challenge for for so many entrepreneurs is is being convinced that the tighter and smaller of a niche that you have the easier it is for people to the easier it is for you to communicate who you serve and the problem you solve. And, and we get so caught up in, you know, when we first start our business, it's pretty much anybody with a credit card or a checkbook. right? <laughs> and so if they'll write me a check, I'll, I'll work for them. Um, but, but that doesn't work, especially in marketing because then our message gets washed out and lost. How do you help clients really see the value in, in a tighter focus? Well, and, and you just hit on it too, because it's like, you can, maybe you truly, it's rare, but maybe you truly can help just about anybody, right? And and you can even have that mindset and be open to that as, as people come in. And, you know, I would hope for your sake, you have some filter of what makes a good client where you really can shine and help folks, right? Because I, I, I do think that's important. But even if you have you know, that widget or that, you know, broad service that you really can help the lawyer who comes to you or the chiropractor or the Fortune 500 company, right? <laughs> if you have that magical thing, that's fine. But what you just touched on, it's it's the marketing of that message. It's the it, how you speak about it. Um, that's That's everything. So you can have, you know, you can be open and make that decision as other people hear about you. And that that's the stuff that just happens too. I mean, we always talk about niching down and do this and do this. Um, but that's for your main focus. That lawyer is going to know a chiro chiropractor who is going to say, oh man, you need Facebook ads. You got to go talk to so-and-so, right? Um, that kind of stuff will happen too. Um, but the other, the other part of that, that, marketing aspect too that I don't think is spoken about enough when we talk about those things is you can have a few. I mean, there's your, there's your far and wide, you know, consistent message that you want to have on your site and your LinkedIn and all of this stuff And it. it and those areas that should be focused. But, you know, if you know that you're about to go hit a networking group, that's full of authors in it, you know, because it's run by a publishing company and you're going to go in there and, and talk about Facebook ads or whatever. Well, you can have that very targeted. Here's how I help authors do this. Right. Or if you're talking to whatever industry to have that, you know, slight shift and have three, four at the ready because of who you're talking to, it still helps them. Awesome. I get it. And they can go away with some way that they can send you business. Yeah, I think the piece that we miss, right? Alex Ramosi teaches in, in $100 million offers, those three elements, right? The problem you solve, the person you solve it for. And this guy, I guess there's two parts. Are they searchable, right? Can you separate them from the rest of the world? So can you target them? And and of course, then do they have the resources to afford you? <laughs> And, and those two elements kind of get lost for a lot of entrepreneurs. They get, they get caught up in, you know, well, I, I want to be a resume writer for college students graduating out of college. It's like, well, that's a great part. They need resumes, right? They need help in that area, but they don't have jobs yet. And so they have, you know, $100,000 worth of debt. Do you want to step into a world <laughs> helping a person that's starting out, you know, six figures upside down? Or do you want to step into a world where somebody's got, you know, a hundred thousand dollars sitting on the side of their sofa ready to spend? Exactly. It's challenging. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's part of it's just the hard truth of like that that. I mean, that's just a numbers game. Like this is who you need to go after. Now, if you want to have, if you're so passionate about helping those college graduates who need this so much, well bake that in somewhere, right? Like have, that's a, a side fund that you help or a certain amount of hours a week. You Pro you bono know. work. Exactly. You can have all of that um, and yay, do it. But if you're not eating <laughs> because you're not charging and you haven't hit that that target client base that, that can't afford you, 
there's not too many of the college graduates that you're going to be able to help. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's challenging. And that, and that those two pieces might be the hardest for some, right. Is figuring out, you know, is their category searchable? Are you, are you able to find them online? Are you able to find them on Facebook or LinkedIn or, you know, is there a, a targeting mechanism on Google to trigger? And, and if you get the right one, like, you know, I, I used to joke about, um, angry white men who've, you know, got sore knuckles cause they punched the wall or, you know, <laughs> it's a, it's a niche with a need, but, but how do you, you can't, they don't tag them on Facebook for that. So <laughs> yeah, it's not a sales navigator category, <laughs> but, but it really is true that if you do find a niche that has the resources to afford good services, you solve a really good problem for them and, and you can search for them you you will build a business yeah big time so yeah love love how you obviously how your business has grown um so one of the things i love about my position in in coaching entrepreneurs is to really take them back to designing the business that they wanted and designing the life that they wanted and then let's figure out how the business supports that instead of letting the business take over their life and and run it for them um, obviously you were able to move from, from Texas to Colorado and, and make a transition, you know, in, in relocating your business. Um, how have you designed your business around your family and, and your lifestyle here in Colorado? I don't think, I don't think as perfectly as I would like for sure. Uh, only, only that. I'm finding it in a lot of ways, exactly that structure in, in, in some ways. Um, but for me, there's a very purposeful nature of, you know, every second I can be with my boys, right? You know, and and what this business does afford me, however, I, I structure it and build it. I'm starting to get even more purposeful with that is that, you know, at a, at a moment's notice, I can go get my kid from school. I can go, you know, and there's not, I mean, there's not some kind of, Oh gee, boss, can I go do this? Like, and I understand that's just a normal thing for folks. Like the idea of that, I don't know. It's just so far out. And, I, and I've had it. I've been in those. I mean, when I first moved here three years ago, for, you know, a few months, I came out here with a, a sales job, you know, very purposefully. I wanted to learn that skill. We talk about interview skills. I wanted that, nice. that skill and, and got me out here and stuff. Um, but then back to being on my own pretty, pretty quickly, fortunately. Um, and so it, it is, it is a yes and no. Like I have, I've been very purposeful with that and owning my time. And I'm fine if I need to be up at three in the morning finishing a last minute thing if that means at three in the afternoon i can be you know picking up my son from school you know like those things are fine you know it's not oh it's easy because it's on my schedule well now sometimes it's you know more hours than you would ever work otherwise right uh, i think i could get i think i could certainly get better with um with some of that purposefulness right and and sticking to a schedule a little more, um, and honestly, you know, valuing that, you know, my own time a little bit more and making sure that I'm outsourcing what I need to be outsourcing so that there, there aren't those three in the morning, <laughs> you know, kind of situations. Um, so nice. We will be right back after this short break. This episode is sponsored by perfect publishing, a different approach to publishing a book. Perfect Publishing carefully chooses heroes of hope who exemplify living a life they created through faith, hope, patience, and persistence. No matter what page you open to in this mini cube of hope, you will find a leader with a big heart. You will see you are not alone. The authors may share similar challenges that only hope and action could resolve. Get your free ebook at getadoseofhope.com. Welcome back. Let's get back to more greatness. Let's talk a little bit about the sales job and 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 taking a, a sales job to acquire that skill for, for the sake of your business. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. So at the time, so we, my wife at the time and, and, and I, we'd been wanting to get up here to Colorado for years and 
she was in a position, she's like, I work remote. So you can, you know, if you can find a job like that makes, gets us to, you know, to move, uh, allows us to move, then we'll do it. And I was like, I'm on it, you know? <laughs> and so I, I very specifically wanted a sales job because, you know, I, and I, I'm, I'm the kind of person who's like, focus on your skills, your strengths, don't worry about the other stuff. Like focus on that. Don't obsess over, well, I don't know this. Well, I don't know that. Well, man, go all in on your strengths. But as a business owner, I, I know that just having that skill set of sales is so important, but it was also like being a connector. It was one of those things I wanted to obtain. I'm also like when it comes to data and the process and the system, like I really don't want to, get good at that at all i'm not good at that <laughs> that's the outsourcing stuff but sales i i wanted that you know so i wanted to very specifically and so um fortunately I, you know just a, a few weeks in on the on the search and uh agency out here called social seo they they uh brought me out here and it was like a week and a half notice it was just like well we're starting this position up like next tuesday could you be here then <laughs> i was like Yes, I well, even can. better, <laughs> even better. So it was a sales, a sales position in digital marketing space. Yes, yeah, and and a little sidetrack with it too, which I, I let people know this power of video and all of that is. So it was the first, it was the first company I applied for, and it was like that. That's where I want to go because it was it was that digital marketing space is my world. I love the stuff and to be a sales job in that. And so I wanted that. I applied and I also, but then I went on the hunt because I was going to make video. Hey, I would love to be, you know, this, this personalized video, but there's a process to that of like, how do I get this video to the person who needs to see it? So it's that hunting down, right. Of, um, folks. So a few weeks had gone by, I'm applying to other places and all of that. And I finally, get those connections, right? There's two roles there. They're like, one of these people are, are making the decision, right? And so I got connected enough. And when I sent that video, I mean, it was within an hour, I got a call like, hey, awesome. I, I, let's talk, you know? And the guy who hired me was, you know, he he talked about that. He's like, that's why we called you, you know, like, because you, we you saw that. You basically added an interview onto your resume. <laughs> Exactly. And just, a, there was just enough of, of, of something there that like, okay, this guy can speak in full sentences, you know, we can put him in front of potential clients, you know, there's a, just a little bit there because that was the other piece of it too, because my resume didn't support that, right? My resume wasn't full of sales roles at all these organizations that on paper, well, yeah, this doesn't make sense. Let's find somebody else. But to see okay, there's something here. We can work with this. We can, you know, we can train this guy up to something to, <laughs> to well, be it's really, at least a it, part. It really, it really proves the point of skill set is only half of the, the job, right? Attitude and, mm. and desire is the other. And you can't show, you can't show that desire through a, a, a resume and an application, you know, and a video allows yeah. you to show, look, I, I want, I want this and I'm willing to, to go all in to have it. And, and you guys, you guys need me. Yeah. I even did a little, we, we would joke about it. Cause I, I even like, I was very purpose cause I was upfront. Like it was obviously, you know, I'm still in Texas, but we're wanting to, to relocate and everything. And I made sure that there was like, even like, boxes behind me like so like nice. like this this implied like oh we're moving like i'm packed up like we're we're moving we're not like maybe going to move you know like just these little we are on our <laughs> way that's right <laughs> and i need a job yeah, was, that's right it was a fast turnaround and i came up here about three months ahead of the family and um got acclimated and, and enroll in a great agency, just wonderful people there and stuff. And again, it was just more of, you know, there were these other opportunities that were happening and. Well, they're fairly that, large so. too. All right. I mean, yeah. So it's a, it's a pretty oh, yeah. large digital marketing company. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're doing, they're doing phenomenal. They're just continuing to expand. They're doing great. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a, it's a good space to, to be in obviously right now. 
um, as oh, it yeah. continues to to evolve. But but people are certainly spending their time online, and so online marketing is going to continue to be the place where companies invest. Oh yeah, big time. So let's talk a little bit about obviously growing yourself, personal development um, idea, and and mentors and how, how have those, I mean, have mentors served you and helped you in this journey? And, and what would you recommend to some of these folks in the startup world for, for finding a mentor? Oh gosh. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, again, really goes back to that network from, you know, starting a startup Dallas to Jason Croft show now strategy and action. And, like it's it that's another thing that that having this kind of format allows it's those conversations right with just amazing people and you know i've just been i've been very fortunate that i've just had those great people in my life there's been some purposefulness of course um but i've i've just found myself drawn to those folks and having those relationships with you know people who are coaches and who are, you know, just that's their world is personal development and they, they do this for a living. So when we're together, just hanging out, that's the kind of stuff we're talking about. Those are the conversations that we're having. And it's been a lot of years of that. Fortunately, I mean, I was interested in, in this stuff even way back in, in college and all of that, you know, the Tony Robbins cassettes and, you know, going through starting that journey there. And I think that this whole idea of just what makes us, better and how do we communicate better and interact better and all of that has just been fascinating for me and and so there's there's so much available that's just wonderful great stuff you know from someone as distant as tony robbins right you know all of that available to folks who are probably right near you and you know finding those resources um and you know from networking groups to anything else and and you 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 dig out and you find those people who speak the same language or that's their world. So they help, you know, walk you through that personal development journey, wherever you are on that. And that's another thing when it comes to mentors and finding that help from somewhere, I think one of the things is to just be really specific for yourself and for that potential connection, mentor, coach, even if you're hiring them, it's, it's a very different mindset to go to somebody and to even just operate in, Oh, that person is going to fix everything. Right. <laughs> like if you go like, Oh man, I don't know what to do with my life. Help me. Right. Like <laughs> what do we do with that? It's almost back to the networking thing, right? Like being, find that specific thing. And we're, we're coaching again, even if you're paying for this, this stuff, coaching is really valuable when you're going in to solve this specific step that has to do with the specific stage you're in right then like oh man i'm just starting out i'm doing this thing i need to dial in my offer i need somebody to help me dial in this and that's what you go into and you get help with and boom okay that's covered how do i get this message out and now it's it could be the same person you know but you go to the, you know it's the next stage but often it's another resource it's another person um and and I've, I've watched that in the most successful people too, who are phenomenal at, at taking action and, Hey, just tell me what to do. I'm, I'm on it. I can go do it. And they're very specific, right? They're very, even the top people in the world, you think like they need a coach, but yeah, they'll go for this one thing. Cause they want to figure out Facebook ads. They've got this empire over here, but they've never really spent time on that. And so who's the best in the world at it? Awesome. Teach me what to do. Got it. And they're on to the next thing. So that specificity is so important. I can't say the word apparently, but it's important. <laughs> specificity. There we go. All right. So let's talk a little bit about, about how you work and, and creating content. Obviously, you know, content creation is a, is a challenge for a lot of entrepreneurs that aren't necessarily in the content creation space. And, and you've actually adapted your, your interview style to creating a, a plethora of content for a company. Yeah. So I've got something called the video growth system. Um, super easy process, simple process for folks. 
I jump on a call similar to this for, you know, 60 to 90 minutes with somebody um, in the, some recording software that I have, obviously not me on camera, just them getting this solo authority content. And out of that, we, we create 48 pieces of content, you know? So that's like, they've got everything they need for a month out of that hour, hour and a half call. Um, and there's a few resources to, to, to do that kind of thing. Obviously anybody could just turn on the camera and go. Right. Uh, but this helps, it really helps pull that out. We talked about story at the very beginning, right? It's pulling out that story. It's before we even start understanding who they're going after, what makes them unique, finding those things. And so from that, we create four anchor pieces of content each month. So eight minute, you know, a little bit longer form piece for YouTube. And then we'll pull clips and we'll create blog posts and we'll do all that out of each of those longer form pieces. Uh, but it's really, you know, people, people come for the, they come for that, that end result and all this content that they have. But what they are often surprised by during the process is that coaching aspect, right? It's that crafting that message um, during, during the interview and going through it and having me on the, the, the other side, you know, off camera recording this to where it's just like, okay, what you've got is, man, I know exactly what you're talking about and what you're trying to get across. Let's, let's craft it this way. Let's talk about, you know, bring in this language a little bit and shift it over here. And that's gonna, then it's a home run. Right. And so having that process, it's just like you said, people, people don't do this. I mean, I've been doing this for 30 years, video and all this stuff. And it's still hard and it's still weird. And it's still to just turn on a camera and look into the lens and create content to myself for myself, you know? And so even for someone who's familiar with it, it takes, you know, it takes the reps. It takes doing this a bunch and still, you know, having that feedback, Oh my gosh, it's so helpful. Well, and 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 it is a little crazy space, right? The reason that we anchor content helps for people that want to go check it out. And then of course you need attraction content, you know, the short reels and, and TikTok videos to to attract people to your stuff so that they will go watch the eight minute one or the full hour one, you know, on your YouTube channel. Yeah. And uh figuring, you know, there there's no there's no rhyme or reason to, to, to which thing will hit. Right. And, and you just, you, you have to put out consistently and put up, uh, you know, a number of these one minute pieces. And, you know, I mean, I've been putting stuff on Instagram now just six months. Like I, I avoided Instagram for, for a long, long time. And if you go look at it right now, there's, you know, the majority of my videos have single digit views. And all of a sudden yesterday I had a video hit a thousand. And I have no idea what the heck happened. <laughs> wow. And, th and that is it. That is the game. Because another thing that's happening too, th that speaks to that, number one, consistency, having this out there. Because now, it's it, 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 we do, if something hits like that, we think about that piece of content. And like, oh, who did I reach with that? More importantly, now when that does hit, now you've got a thousand people who go, oh, I really dig this. Let me find out more. And then they go, oh, now there's a library. Now there's a full thing. But also all the algorithms are making that what just happened to you like more possible because they're they're trying to mimic TikTok's algorithm, which is interest-based instead of connections-based and just putting it in front of who you're connected. They're actually feeding that, oh, they like entrepreneurism. Well, let's put a bunch of stuff that's that's there. And then when those hit, you know, that'll, that'll be a bump. And then, you know, if you've been on there creating this great content for six months, there's something to pull from and there's something to grab and like, Oh, perfect. And then that, that can hit. It's powerful. Yeah. Well, and, and the whole real thing, I always felt like when, when Facebook and Instagram, you know, first dump these reels and people have set up these videos that you, you have to watch it six times just to figure out what, <laughs> wait, what was that ending? Wait, wait, a, Oh no, I got to Oh, I missed it. Oh, and I, I haven't been creative enough to get there. I, I just want to keep creating, you know, purposeful content in under a minute, but 
but that idea of having to watch it over and over and over again just to to see the end and and of course TikTok is a whole other weird space where obviously crazy other things are happening but there's still a space where people are watching and and learning from personal development and and tapping into the personal development you know as much as the dance craze videos and so it it is a space that that people are are looking for this type of content even in the short one minute hit oh yeah and it's it's another great exercise in getting that succinct message down right when you have that constraint of 60 seconds what is the most actionable nugget here you know that i can get across and again that's another skill set that can carry you through meeting someone in the grocery store what do you do how do you help people you know and having that right or an interview like this oh how do you do here well i do this boom 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 oh fantastic i got it you know <laughs> nice all right so you mentioned consistency as as a big important part of developing your video content library uh, what would you say is the second most important thing oh gosh I think, well, yeah, there's a few things, a bunch of things coming to mind. All right, <laughs> um, spit them out. We'll take them all. Or the perfect. top three. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because this is, it, 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 it is, it's critical. And, I, and I've been horrible at it. I've had spots of being great at it. and But I've watched the, you know, my buddies who have just you know, millions of views on YouTube and all that kind of stuff. And that is just, I've been so impressed with, with them. And so they've inspired me to, to do so much better with that side of things. It is, it's, it's important. Um, it really depends on your, your, your goal with it too. For me and the way I, you know, encourage people, the, the why behind it, you know, starting a show for instance and creating this content, you know, is to build your business, right? There, there might be a, a whole different, set of, Hey, go do this, you know, for folks who just want to create entertaining content or build their views or something like this for, for me, it's to help you grow your business. Right. Um, and so part of that is the, you know, it's the wrapper, you know, of the thing that is the show, you know, it's having that, that, you know, from the graphics on screen while you're doing that interview or the even straight to, to camera authority content, it's having that wrapper on there a little bit. So there's just that extra little, Oh, okay. This is real. This is, this is legitimate, you know? Um, and especially when you go to invite that guest on, even if, you know, it's not Oprah, you're trying to get on the show, you know, even if it's somebody who's never been on a show, but they're big in your industry and it would mean the world to have them on when they can, when you can send them to a link and, and they just see the show, even if they don't watch it, they just see like, Oh, okay. This is, this is real. Or their assistant goes and looks and says, oh yeah, yeah, it's a real thing they're doing. It's, it's great. You can be on it. You know, those little things. And then structuring that show so that you, it is very clear to the person you're interviewing and anybody that that person shares it with, that it's clear what you do and how you help people um, and not being averse to, oh, well, you know, I wouldn't want to come off as salesy in my show or anything like, you know, it's like, <laughs> Well, a call to action. I think, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Call, every 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 video should have a call to action, even if it's just, hey, hit the like button, right? I mean, yeah. Follow follow me, yeah, you know, right. Subscribe to our page, <laughs> yeah, our YouTube channel. Um, those are so important, man. I oh, yeah. I love what you mentioned about goals. Know know what your purpose is. Know what you're doing, because um, it is tempting. There's there's marketers in Bangladesh and Pakistan and all these places that'll 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 contact you and say, we'll get you a thousand followers. We'll get you 10,000 followers. We'll get you, you know, a thousand legitimate likes. And you're like, and there's, it, it's, if you don't know your goal, those would be tempting to, to jump into just to throw the numbers up. Cause everybody talks about the numbers and where the numbers are. And, and, and if, if you can get caught in that numbers game and, and you can falsify it, which of course doesn't lead to more business for your business. <laughs> Even, even if yeah. the numbers are bigger. And so it, yeah. it, it's a weird, it's a weird, I know the truth. I know what I really want. And yet when those offers come, you're like, oh, that, oh, for a hundred bucks, I can get well, what? <laughs> and it's, and it's an interesting conversation that, I, that 
I, I think it's it's messier than than people want to make it out to be, and it is it is messy. You know, I, I was going to say a gray area, but it's just messy, right? Because as on, on all sides, so as a creator, as just as human beings, we want you know, we want I want to grow the show, yeah, like and just that reach, right? I want I want the legitimate growth. To, to things actually reaching people because then when I bring someone on the show, it's even more beneficial to them. Right. If, if it Absolutely. actually means something more, you know, but then there's everything else around it, right. There's, there's the, there is perception. There is that feeling of really from an audience standpoint, I think more than, you know, cause just like I said, I mean, certainly when you get up there people you have to reach these numbers before they're going to come on your show but the majority of guests cool i'll be on right but if i'm going after just somebody and i haven't you know had a conversation with them but they know that i help people create podcasts right and they go well let me go look at his youtube channel four views a hundred view for like just this person know what they're doing like we as humans also have that that reaction now logically we can know and we can talk to them and like oh, okay well that's that's secondary to why you go create a show but there's still there's still a piece there that's you know there there is that perception you know if you if you're hiring somebody to to be your social media person and specifically especially like to grow your instagram account and their instagram has four followers <laughs> i mean you can't, <laughs> you know, you can't get around that. You know, there, I think there is, I understand the big, you know, out of shape d- dude can be a great coach because he's not going to go on the field. I understand that, but I do think there's a difference here. You know, like if you haven't gotten those results for yourself, I think there's, there's a piece of that. And I've, I've played with it on all my channels a little bit. You'll see the, the up and downs of, because it's also an SEO thing, which is, that's where I've, I've done it and paid for promotion and paid for certain things. So like, Oh, this will be interesting to see. Cause it's all an experiment. And I, you know, I tell people all day long, like, Oh, this one got a lot of views. I was like, no, 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 no. I did a pay promotion thing. Like, like, you know, yeah, I'm not well, trying I mean, to get it, 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 based like, on that, you know? <laughs> well, and, and like you said, we know, we know there's experts out there that are faking it, right? They're, they're renting the car and taking their weekend pictures to make all their social media posts, you know, in front of an Airbnb with a, with a rental, you know, supercar. Right. And and so that temptation is is there as well. But, and I think that's where the consistency in, you mentioned having that library, having that content that, that people can, you know, actually go back through and, and see my very first show, my second show, my third show and see not just the progression of the show, but actually, you know, the, the fact that, that my message, you know, we've tweaked it a little bit as we've gotten better in refining our marketing. But, but the truth is who I am as a person is the same from the very first show till, till today. Um, I mean, I'm better at this conversation and I'm better at drawing out my guests, but, but, but my character is I'm the same guy. And I think that's an important piece in this, you know, the authenticity of, of being yourself and putting the real you out there and attracting your people and, and the people that are literally legitimately attracted to what you're offering and what you're putting out in the world. Yeah. And, and that's, and that's everything. Just again, going back to no matter what you're doing to grow your business, like that energy is going to get felt, you know, people are, however they encounter you, <laughs> you know, whether it's a, on your YouTube channel or, you know, meeting in a network group, they're going to get that feeling one way or another, you know, of that authenticity or like, oh, something's off here, you know, either way. And, you know, it is a, it, again, it's just a big messy, you know, situation because we're always, yeah, we're always playing with that. Right. We always want to put our best foot forward. We want to shine our, business in a great light and our clients business and stuff but you know we also you know the vast majority of folks don't resonate with the rented ferrari fo- you know <laughs> and they're like oh, okay that's weird but it is it's all you know it's all a certain play and you have a, a enough vulnerability out there like hey here's what's going on and 
This well, is all I, mean, I can do is be me and, you know. Even the temptation to, hey, let's put a TikTok video on of somebody, you know, girl on the beach to get more views. But, but like, then the message, right, then all this consistent message I've put up there and all of a sudden there's this these hits of weirdness that don't match. And so, it, I mean, I, I could figure out how to get these hits with some stupid jokes or some, you know, pranks or other stuff that people are putting out there. But but I want my message consistent and I want it representing what I do in my business across the board. And and so that's more important to me. And so I think that goal, that goal really does matter because if it's a numbers goal, Hey, let's go hit the numbers. Let's, let's play the game that everybody else is playing and let's go, let's go get some numbers. But if the goal is, I want this to be an attraction marketing where people that see it know, like, and trust and, and the message is consistent on my TikTok channel, on my YouTube channel, and on my podcast is all sending the same message. And they go to my website and they're like, oh, yeah, this is the same guy. And uh, I think we want to do, you know, we want to get to know more about him. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I think, I think you know, not the, you know, fake views and fake lifestyle and stuff like that. I think the when it comes to um, working the system, if you will, though, like, LinkedIn or any of these platforms, I, I do think there's value in, you know, understanding the algorithm and oh, giving absolutely. the algorithm what it wants. But I think you can do that and still get your message across, right? Like LinkedIn wants a slideshow of what I want to say today. Okay, I'll put it in a slideshow. <laughs> like it's going to get 70% more reach if I do that. Make a poll. Cool. Right. Exactly. You know, but understanding those things for some people, for some reason that that is in the same category as buying views or renting a Lambo or something like that, you know, and that's weird to me because this is more just, okay, well, this is the platform you're trying to play in. You can be 100% authentic, tell exactly the message you want to tell it, but yeah, don't, don't do it in you know, don't put a link in it <laughs> when you try to do it, you know, do it this way, do it that way. Um, those are just like little constraints of the, of the platform that are just going to reward you. And if this message that you're trying to get out is so important to you, why wouldn't you want it to, to reach more folks? You know? Yeah. Certainly following the guidelines is definitely beneficial. Jason, this has been fantastic. I end the show typically asking the guests share Jason's words of wisdom for our entrepreneurial audience. What would you share? Oh, connect like crazy. That's what I would share. Nice. Jason, thank you so much for, for hanging out and just uh, sharing your wisdom. And this was, this was fantastic. Appreciate you. Thank you for having me on. This has been an absolute blast. Thanks so much. Sweet, man. It's kind of cool when you don't have to hit the buttons, huh? I know. <laughs> don't have to stop it and start it record. <laughs> exactly. Uh, cool man I fantastic did uh did you get our form from my admin i don't i don't think all so right. so look for an email from my admin that will have a it's got a form asks for all the stuff um and the only other thing okay. that i ask that isn't on the form is you know who do you know that would make a great guest that you'd be willing to introduce me to yeah and i, I i've got somebody in mind for that uh actually my co-host of concentric gary de rodriguez um he would be phenomenal for you and for him to be on and all of that stuff. So sweet. Well, sweet. And we've you got some networking events coming up in the Springs that I'll send you information for. This episode is brought to you by intentional decisions that lead to massive success. No, those aren't companies promoting our show. They are qualities that you need to build your business and take control of your life. So to help you out, I'm offering my most popular worksheets to help you plan the future you want and audit your calendar today. The best way to get what you want is to know what it is and start making sure that your calendar matches. You can download them free today at addvaluemindset.com. If you will take action by just completing these two activities, they will change your life and business. I promise you a new level of results in the coming year. The problem is that we make things so complicated and we lose focus on what is really important. These tools will help you refocus on what matters most. When you align your passion with your purpose in your work, you can be happier and start doing the things you wanted to in the first place. 
like spending more quality time with the kids. To get your free copy of the tools to start tackling your busy schedule, go to addvaluemindset.com. If you enjoy the show, please like, subscribe, leave a review. But most importantly, if you enjoyed this episode, share it with someone who needs to hear it. Share, share, share. In our next episode, Andy Hoffman and Robert talk about money and human behavior. Andy helps people set money goals and then create a system to honor those goals because the system aligns with our natural habits. Most money planning goes against the grain and is as challenging to honor as a diet. But Andy helps people find success in creating a money system and protecting the plans that you make for your money.